batter up. Oh, that's a home run. Oh, wait a second. That's the stuff. Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, every single weapon in Sunbreak got notable changes with the release of the expansion, and a lot of them are worth digging around into to truly experience the variety in hunting that we've gotten that is constantly just growing and growing. But what about Insect Glaive? Well, every weapon got new switch skills, but Insect Glaive got something most weapons didn't, a change to its basic moveset to begin with, specifically when using powder-based kinsex, an attack called Powder Vortex. Using this move, you pull in all the powder in a specific area around the monster and make it explode for a singular giant pop of damage. The damage of this does depend on the type of powder that's consumed and the level of your kinsect. And of course, one of the new switch skills Insect Flave got is excellent at creating powders when using a powder-based kinsect as well. And so a new playstyle shall be born, a ranged playstyle. And if there's one thing that I love doing, it's building unique playstyles for weapons that normally function totally differently. So today I present to you the Awakened Vortex Insect Glaive. First things first, the damage of Awakened Kinsect and the damage of Powder Vortex are affected by an extremely small number of things. They are almost exclusively linked to Kinsect level and type, and so if we wanted to, you could build to play in this style that I'm showing here with full defensive and utility skills as well, but that would be somewhat boring. Instead, I've created a build that is chock full of offensive skills, letting you use it as a standard grounded Insect Glaive build with all your melee attacks, while also containing the best possible usage of Powder Vortex, because it is extremely cool to look at and very fun to use, almost like a mage rather than a melee weapon user. Powder Vortex itself has its damage decided simply by Kinsect type, level, and the amount of powder around the place, and so the only requirement to make it as strong as possible is to use the Bilbo Bricks Kinsect. Kinsect. This is the powder kinsect that makes both blast and heal powder. Blast powder specifically provides the most damage when sucked into powder vortex, heal provides a little bit, but not as much as blast, and as a result, this kinsect is required for this style. Interestingly though, when blast powder explodes in this manner, it properly counts as a blast proc, and so you can boost the damage of it slightly by using the Teostra Soul Rampage Decoration for a 20% damage boost to the little blast that happened. As a result of this, our weapon becomes decided for us as well. In the footage, I use absolutely minimal weapon attacks because I just want to show off how strong Awakened Kinsect and Powder Vortex are as a ranged playstyle and just go back and forth between the two, but I still want to give you extremely strong melee attacks as an option, because obviously when you're using this yourself, you'll probably want to hit the monster too. And so we go for the highest raw Insect Glaive that also has a level 14 or 15 Kinsect, as that is the requirement for max damage from these two attacks we are focusing on. From there, there are a couple of choices, but the one that fits best with what we are doing is the Scorned Magnamalo Glaive, as this is also a blast status glaive, letting us build even further around Blast in general. I mean, if we're using the Teo Soul Rampage deck, we may as well use Blast on our melee attacks too, right? At which point, we may as well put extra Blast build up in our armor and create a build that is essentially Blast-based Insect Glaive. How does that sound? With the basics explained then, let's talk about the armor set itself. The only skill really required to make the thing that you're seeing in the footage work is Wirebug Whisperer, and even then you don't necessarily need that. Everything else is just extra stuff to make your melee hits strong as well, as well as leaning us into being a blast build, and so the armor itself is Teostra Helm and Waist, Jelly Chest, Malzano Arms, and Ingot Legs. As well, any talisman that has three two slots of value will work here, whether that be a three attack with no slots, two attack with a two slot, multiple blast attack, or a critical eye, or weakness exploit, things like that. If you happen to have something worth even one more two slot though, you can finish off blast attack and fully complete this build. But I don't have that personally, so I'll be showing this build with my three attack one slot talisman. The decorations that go into it are three tenderizer jewels, two critical jewels, three grinder jewels to help with sharpness management when you use the melee attacks, and then you will have up to three spare one slots, in which I personally choose to put in stun resistance, because stun is just not fun to deal with, so if you can negate it, that's great, but you can do whatever you want with these slots. The skill list that this results from is seven attack boost, seven critical eye, three critical boost, three weakness exploit, three stun resistance, three speed sharpening, two blast attack, two teostra blessing, one wirebug Whisperer, and then one Focus, one Slugger, and one Blight Resistance as pure bonuses from the armor set we have equipped. The Teostra Blessing increases Blast Buildup by 10% when you have two ranks of it, and then two ranks of Blast Attack does the same thing, allowing our weapon hits to get Blast that much easier. Blasts that are, of course, 20% stronger than standard do do us using the Teo Soul Rampage Decoration as well. As far as the math goes behind the weapon hits themselves, then, the Scorned Magnamalo Glaive is 330 raw on it, plus 10 for attack boost is 340, times 1.1 for attack boost, times 1.1 
1.39 for purple sharpness, times 1.36 for 90% affinity with full crit boost, is a total of 707 effective raw. Our blast buildup is 28, plus 2 for blast attack, 430, times 1.1 as well for blast attack, times 1.1 for Teostra Blessing, is 36.3. And if your talisman is good enough to also fit that final rank of blast attack, it would jump up even further than that. Explosions! Of course, all of this is just based around the melee ability of the build, which is what you may be using, but not really what you're seeing in the footage. And so now it's time to talk about the proper details of the playstyle that I'm using here that you're seeing. That can kill Afflicted Rathian, who has an average of 81,000 health in under 17 minutes with very few actual melee hits, and while being safe enough to only be hit by the monster a handful of times the entire hunt. Because in essence, what I wanted to create here was ranged insect glaive. Though because of how little it was actually boosted by, we stuck an entire melee build around around it, so you can mix both back and forth between the two yourself and your actual usage of it. I, however, am going to be sticking to a relatively simple formula. Get one of each extract type, red, white, and orange, use Awakened Kinsect Attack with all three extracts for maximum damage while creating one pop of powder for every tick it gets as it pierces through the monster. And then when you land from the following jump attack you're forced into, you mark the target with the Kinsect once more and do a Powder Vortex to suck it all in and do a massive pop of a thousand damage or higher. It's worth noting that if you use the more melee elements of the glaive with this, you want to take advantage of Tetra Seal Slash. This move both creates powder and fires out your kinsect while you are attacking, accomplishing certain goals for Powder Vortex while also keeping up melee pressure. This playstyle is strong, reliable, repeatable, and safe. Yes, you could be doing more damage if you're going pure melee, but that isn't what these kinds of builds are about. The build I presented can mix the melee and ranged portions quite well, but I simply wanted to show you the pure power of these two ranged attacks when used correctly together. I will say that I'm not always perfect with this either, but the ideal way to get your Kinsect Extracts with this is to mark the target rather than just sending your Kinsect out, as when you mark a target part, it also creates a powder to be consumed by Powder Vortex later. If it wasn't for the fact that Awakened Kinsect Attack forces you forward into an aerial stab of the monster, you can even actually label this as a Kinsect-only playstyle the way that it works. Well, uh, the Glaive itself does absolutely minimal damage if you play the way that I am, and I love those types of weird ways to play. All in all, I'm not an Insect Glaive main, I don't pretend to be by any means. So the nuances of the weapon are lost on me because I simply haven't spent enough time with it, but I've taken the time here to understand these two abilities to the best of my ability in order to show you what we can accomplish with only them. Also worth noting that Awakened Kinsect Attack itself seems to scale a bit weirdly. It isn't affected by raw in the slightest, but it seems to increase with the base element of the weapon. Not the overall element when increased by skills, only the base element that is on the weapon by default. For example, any raw insect glaive with level 14 or 15 Kinsect will hit for ticks of 98 on the belly of the training dummy, and elemental glaives will hit upwards of that depending on how much element is on them, with Narwa hitting the highest at 110 per tick. This leads us to believe that it is based on element the damage increases, however if you were to slot in for example 5 ranks of thunder attack skill as well to boost your thunder damage by 20%, the damage doesn't change at all on awakened kinsect attack. So it's all tied to the base element to the weapon, which is sort of strange as a condition. Generally though, if you are playing with this style of insect glaive we are here, Powder Vortex will be your big damaging move anyways, and so we take that slight damage bump down and use a Status Glaive to really maximize our Blast, as Blast is a fun way to take something that wants to use Teo Soul regardless. I hope you've all enjoyed this video exploring an alternate Insect Glaive gameplay style. Of course, the build works perfectly well as a standard grounded melee glaive build only occasionally weaving in Powder Vortex, but it also maximizes Powder Vortex in a way that I personally find quite fun to just pretty much try and use that attack as much as possible. I hope you enjoy this if you make it yourself or maybe you've even learned something about these attacks today if you didn't know before, or even gotten inspiration to mess with your own build just a little bit. This playstyle is weird, it's funky, and I think it's loads of fun while also being relatively safe as far as keeping you a fair distance from the monster while you're outputting this kind of damage. Like if you like the video, subscribe with the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye